Hey, Steve Arnold here, and welcome back to another episode of my Processing Subscriber Images uh, videos. In this one, we're going to be working on an image sent in to me by a subscriber, James May, who uh, sent in an image that I'll just pop up on the screen here somewhere. Um, and he was interested to uh, for me to explain my process, uh, my end-to-end -end process on basically how I would make this image pop. So what I'll be doing is running through my process of uh, using Photoshop to really bring the best out of this image by focusing and controlling the light on the mountains in the center of the shot. So we're going to be using a few different techniques, uh, some warming and uh, some luminosity masking techniques and some vignette techniques um, that are really going to help this image stand out. Now, if you enjoy this video and you get a lot from it, please just give it a thumbs up on YouTube so that I can uh, get an idea for you know, whether you like this video or not. And if you want me to keep making more, just like it. So with that said, it's probably time to move over to Photoshop and we can get started. All right, so here we are with James's image in uh, Lightroom. And I'm just gonna make a couple of uh, small adjustments before we open up into Photoshop. Um, actually, first I'm gonna check these two boxes down here in the lens corrections section. Um, but yeah, you'll notice here the, the highlights are just slightly overexposed. So I'm just gonna drag the highlight slider down until that red disappears and that in theory has uh, brought back the detail in those areas so it's quite bright probably not going to see much detail in there anyway but you know at least uh, at least as far as the histogram is concerned we haven't overexposed them anyway and just this uh, you know this these bushes and trees in the foreground um, yeah the shadows are just a little bit on the dark side so I'm just going to lift those using well, let's see what the black slider does. Again, don't want to go too far here. I just want to give myself enough to uh, to start from a good starting point in Photoshop. So with that done, I think the white balance looks good. It's a nice sort of daytime white balance. Um, maybe I'm just looking at it. I, I can't quite tell if this line through the middle here should be straight. Should you know should be horizontal or not? I uh, can see it's just a bit of a tilt on it. So I'm just gonna see how it looks if I just rotate a little bit to the left. So yeah, whether or not this should be straight, it might be a hill, uh, which is confusing things. Now on second thoughts, this tree, I'm not sure what that is. I <laughs> don't know if you call it a tree or a bush or some kind of, uh, some kind of plant. Um, yeah, that rotation has actually sent that thing um, off to the side of it. So again, if that should be vertical, then then I actually need to rotate it this way. And then we can see we've got a hill definitely happening here. Um, I'll, I'll probably just leave it as it is. Let me reset that. So uh, yeah, James, for you, I guess the correct rotation would depend on yeah, your memory of what the scene was like and whether that was a hill and whether it should be straight or slightly on uh, on a slant. Um, either way, let's go into Photoshop now. So edit in Photoshop 2020. And I think the uh, the focus for this process is, um, yeah, it's gonna be like drawing the attention towards the center of the frame here. So the mountains here, they're really the star of the shot. Uh, we've got a bit of sky um, you know, up in the top here that's not really doing all that much, not really sort of providing much interest into the scene. We've got a good foreground here and there's some, there's some good action over here on the right hand side. So what I'll probably end up doing towards the end is just cropping the image in a little bit to create a bit of a panoramic format. But um, yeah, before I do that, in case I change my mind, I'll do all of my edits first and then the crop last. So, you know, I don't want to get to the situation where I've cropped first and then make my edits and then decide that I want to kind of expand back and recover some of that, uh, some of the parts that I've cropped because then they won't be edited. If that makes, uh, if that makes sense, I don't know if I explained that very well, but anyway, um, yeah. So the first thing, uh, I'm probably just going to go a bit of a creative route here and not necessarily follow my uh, regular workflow because 
at the outset here, I'm deciding that the focus of this is going to be to kind of brighten and bring attention and add detail to the middle here. Um, and then the rest of the image, we're going to do whatever edits are going to support that. So I'm going to just dive straight into, um, you know, focusing the attention on the center of the frame. Uh, so with that, the first thing I'm going to do is add an empty layer here. Sample with the brush tool selected. Uh, I've got to sample a kind of a light color here from the cloud. Slightly purpley, slightly warmish maybe. 30% opacity. And I'm just going to run the brush through here to kind of enhance the effect of a bit of sunlight coming from wherever it's coming from out here on the left, obviously. Um, but yeah, imagining that the sun is actually finding a way through those clouds. Uh, now that might be a bit too strong. So let's just reduce the opacity there. So I've lightened that and added a bit of, bit of sunlight to it. Just using that brush, uh, that brushed in color. Um, now let's start on just using some curves adjustments to uh, to focus the the light and attention on that middle of the frame there so yeah the thing is when when you're shooting in uh, sort of uh daylight as opposed to sunrise and sunset um you know there's not a lot of the uh, a lot of the sort of adjustments that you see me make in my own uh walkthroughs you know where i've where i've um you know, when I'm processing an image taken at sunrise or sunset, the light is very different here. I can see the light is still very low um, by, you know, by the direction of the shadows, um, but it is kind of a daylight image. So, you know, a lot of uh, that color and contrast boosting stuff that I usually talk about, um, it, you know, there's only so far you can take it. Um, so I'll do a little bit of contrast, but mainly I'm just going to be focusing on editing um, or adjusting the uh, kind of the the light on a larger scale across the image. So starting off, I'm going to just create this curve here to brighten the image. And I'm going to invert the mask. And with the white brush now, I'm just going to brush through the middle here again. Similar to the, uh, the first adjustment that I made, just lining the middle bit under the clouds. But this time it's uh, well, it's doing it in a slightly different way to what this uh, this kind of sun flare effect has added. And now I've done that, I'm just going to do the inverse and create a darkening curve. Invert the mask. Actually, no, let's yeah, let's start off with the white mask. So the effect is is applied to the whole image. And now I'm going to uh, use a black brush to mask it out and, and bring the center of the image, including a bit of the foreground this time, uh, bringing that back up to its original brightness. So not taking on any of this darkening effect. And yeah, so actually let's, Let's increase this black point here on the bottom of the curve. So turn this into a bit of a contrast vignette because we, I just want to make sure these uh, shadows don't get too crunchy um, in the foreground. Yeah, that's a bit too much. Okay. So. Do you know what? Let's go back to this first curve here and just bring that into the foreground as well a little bit more. Just, just brightening these, these shadows through these bushes here. Okay, so without these two layers applied, we can see the image um, in its kind of original uh, state. Actually, let's remove this one as well. So these three layers, and now let's apply them together just to see the effect they're having. So, you know, the, the middle's getting lighter, the edges are getting darker. And actually the more 
more I look at this, the more I think I'm gonna just really reduce this to quite a low opacity here. Just make it really, really subtle. So here's before, here's after. So we're getting there. This is, um, yeah, this is the kind of thing that I'm just gonna continue on with um, for a couple more adjustments. So let's add uh, another curve here again to brighten the image maybe we can give it a little bit of contrast this time so just a slight s curve in there uh, invert the mask uh, white brush and now let's brush through the middle again and again let's try another um, another contrast um, vignette. So just a slight darkening there and then a slight nudge upwards on the black point and a black brush just to, uh, to brush this out of the middle. So the reason I'm doing this over a number of adjustments, even though it looks like I'm kind of doing the same thing and just repeating the same thing, is that each time the brush strokes are getting applied in a slightly different part of the frame. So if you look at the, each individual mask here, you know, there are differences um, between each mask. And so that means that doing this, uh, you know, it's, it's going to blend the effect in more naturally than, um, you know, that if, if I just did one big contrast or uh, brightening or darkening effect and then just brushed it in, um, you know, the edges between what's masked in and out wouldn't be so subtle. So, um, yeah, there we go again, before and after. Now, I think um, just moving on from these adjustments, the next thing I want to try is... Uh, adding some warmth into the mountains here because they're a really nice kind of um, kind of almost like a golden color uh, so I want to really bring that out and enhance that golden effect so um, yeah with this technique that I'm about to use um, I have got a separate video on how to actually create it and apply it to only the uh, the, the highlights in in an image using a luminosity mask so I've got a separate video for that I'll put the link in the YouTube description for that. Um, but for the purpose of this demonstration, I'll just use the luminosity masking panel to create this effect. Now, what it involves is loading a highlight selection here in the uh, luminosity selections bar. So highlights one, and then I'm gonna scroll down to the color section of the panel and click warm. So that's going to add uh, a nice warming filter with a luminosity mask applied so that the uh, so the effect is applied into the highlights only so that's um, yeah that's a really nice effect there I think that's that's added a lot to the image already maybe let's just reduce the opacity a little bit okay that's yeah that's looking good so I think um, I want to see if I can uh, kind of enhance or increase this effect through the middle here, just in those middle mountains. So what I'll do is just duplicate this. So this whole folder of uh, effects that's been created, I'm gonna drag that down onto the new layer panel, uh, new layer button, and that's duplicated the whole thing. Now, I think it's probably a bit too strong now around the sides of the image. So I'm now, now I'm gonna actually put this into its own group so that I can create a separate layer mask for it. So Command or Control G is going to put that whole bit there into a new group. And I can add a layer mask to this group, invert the mask, and now with a white brush, I can brush this warming effect just through here into the mountains in the middle. So let's see, with that done, let's just adjust my panels here so I can get rid of all of these in one hit. So here's the before, and here's the after. So 
Do you know what? I think this is probably a bit too much, actually. I might even just scrap this uh, second, uh, this duplicated version. Or well, actually, let me just have another go. I'm going to delete the mask and I'll just try and be a little bit more careful with where I'm brushing. So just on the front sides of the mountains here, maybe. Because um, it was kind of discoloring the clouds a little bit too much. Okay. I think that'll do. That's a nice subtle adjustment. All right. So from here, um, we're kind of almost there in terms of creative adjustments. You know, it's, it's always tempting to kind of over process a, a daylight light uh, a daylight white balance kind of shot um, I think what we've done so far is uh, yeah, it's, it's really good um, so from here maybe we could go on to increase the detail now in the uh, in the mountains over here and we can do that perhaps with a um, a uh, high pass filter layer uh, so yeah let's give that a shot let's go select all Edit, copy merged, edit, paste. And now let's go filter, other, high pass. Now I want to choose a detail, uh, a pixel radius here that's going to give us some good detail in the mountains without becoming too overly sharp. So I'll uh, click OK there. Now let's change this blend mode to soft light. Add a black layer mask. That's Alt or Option. Click on the new layer mask option, and it'll uh, create a black mask rather than a white one. And again, back to our white brush, we can just subtly brush this in to those rocky areas and really enhance their uh, level of detail. So technically, this is like a sharpening effect. Um, okay, so that's brought out some really nice detail there. Quite subtle. I'm not sure if it's going to come across in the video unless you're watching full resolution on a 4K screen. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's looking pretty good. So at this point, let's see what we can do with the crop. So um, yeah, I, I did mention that the uh, the sky is probably you know, we can, we can reduce the amount of sky there and not really lose out too much. Um, and let's bring this top corner down so that this, this rocky ledge here kind of finishes up in the, uh, in the corner, just so that we've got some, you know, so that it kind of exits right on that corner there. Maybe let's bring this in a little bit more. Click OK, or hit return, and there we go. I think just just focusing that crop in on the on the middle here. I think that really helps give that final transformation that this image really uh, is going to benefit from. So again, let's see the before and after on the actual processing effects here. So here's before, here's after. Now I'd I'd be pretty happy with this if it was if it was my shot. I think this is a, a good uh, a good process, a good image. Um, but I also do like to just try things, um, see you know just to see how far I can push things, and then dial them back if I need to. So let's try an auto effect layer just to see what it does. Now, if well I'm using the panel to create this auto effect layer here. I'll put a video in the YouTube description. Um, I'll put a link to a video where I show you how to actually create this if you don't have the panel. Um, but that'll just take a second or two to run. Now let's see what that does if I just invert the mask. And yeah, that, do you know what? It really softens the foreground up nicely. It has underexposed those shadows quite badly. Um, so I'd have to fix that. Um, but yeah, I really like what it's doing to the mountains. So what I think I'll do, I'll reduce the opacity there to about 
And now I'll use the panel here to load a, um, a highlights luminosity mask into the mask of the autumn effect. So again, I'll put a video in the description um, on YouTube on how to actually create a luminosity mask and load it into a, uh, a layer mask of a regular layer like this. Um, but for now, for the purpose of this video, I'll just hit the uh, H1 button to, to load that highlights selection into the layer mask. Now, okay, that's probably actually restricted it a bit too much. So if we look, yeah, the, the mask, it's, it's masking out too much. I, I really want it in the uh, foreground a lot more than it is. So maybe I'll try a mid-tones mask. So let's try that. M1, mid-tones one. Yeah, I think that's a lot better actually. So now we're only masking it out of those deepest shadows and the brightest highlights. So I think that's, that's where I would want this to be. And yeah, it's just giving it that pop of color as well. So that's really nice. I think where we are is actually a really good place for this image. So um, yeah, James, I hope uh, yeah, I hope you get a lot from this video, and you can uh, you know pick and choose which bits and pieces work for you if uh, if you have some different preferences. But um, yeah, for everyone else and yourself, James, uh, well, thank you for for sending this in to me, um, of course. But uh, yeah, for everyone else, I hope there were some lessons in this video for you that you can uh, you can try. Uh, and use on your own images. And I hope it gave you a good idea of how to process a um, you know, daylight white balanced um, landscape such as this in, in kind of light conditions rather than the more typical kind of sunset and sunrise that I tend to share. Um, but yeah, with that said, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, if you want to send an image in to me for consideration for an upcoming video, then I'll put a link to the form in the description on YouTube um, for the, you know, for the submission form for that as well. So yeah, with that said, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you soon.